Sweet everybody! It's time to renew an old-fashioned rivalry. Florida State, Oklahoma. Part. Or at least not part of the Cheez-It Bowl, but it is the Cheez-It Bowl. Here's your stumper for the said Cheez-It Bowl between Florida State and Oklahoma. Former Florida Stadian, Burt Reynolds, was in both Longest Yard movies, the original and in the reboot. In the 2005, which was the reboot, who did he play and how was it significant to this one football game? It's, by the way, it's both teams, by the way. And at least in uh, the original, by the way, here's your hint. He did not play the same character because uh, the 2005 version, the, the, the star quarterback uh, was uh, Paul Crew was played by Adam Sandler. Who did Burt Reynolds play? How is it significant to this ball game? We'll tell you coming up next, Boomer Center 1982. Don't go away. show you guys know me i'm mary james the florida state oklahoma or florida uh, oklahoma florida state cheese it bowl sooner stumper burt reynolds in both longest yard films the original and in the reboot longest yard moot films by the way in the 2005 reboot who did he play and how is it significant to this rivalry well burt reynolds former florida stater played coach Nate Scarborough. Now, fictionally, Nate Scarborough played at Oklahoma. And if you go back and you watch one scene in the longest yard, Burt actually has an old-fashioned, one of those uh, uh, Velcro-backed OU hats on in the scene. It's pretty cool. All right, so that's your answer. So now let's talk about the Cheez-It Bowl between Florida State and Oklahoma. Series, eight games, 7-1 in favor of Oklahoma. That's an 86% winning clip. The last and only win for Florida State, 1964, was Fred Nabulichnikov. That's right, the former wide receiver. At Oakland Raider, he got the best of the seniors in that one time, 36-19. to 19. Of course, Oklahoma did end up getting revenge, winning the last seven meetings, including a 23-13 to 13 win in Tallahassee in 2011, if you'll remember that game. All right, well, pre-game festivities. Of course, you guys already know that this won't be here till next year, but we'll still talk about it. WWLS, the sports animal, they are at the O'Connells. They're on campus, corner at Balfour and Normand, which is right across the street, literally. The ref, that's where half of those guys are. The other half are at the Hertz Donuts. They're on ASP. They're on Campus Corner. Uh, right by the Hertz Donuts factory right there. The franchise where they used to be over there on ASP. Now they are over there across the street from the footballs. Just north of the football facility. And as is the party at the Palace right there. And that is also where Toby and those guys do their pregame set from about two and a half to three hours before the game starts. 
This game, the Cheese It Bowl, will be played thir uh, Thursday, December 29th at 4.30 Central Time at Camping World Stadium in Orlando. On the Sooner Radio call, of course, will be Toby Rowland. Tiro is also the play-by-play -play man for Sooner Hoops in baseball and has his own radio show when he's not when he's not when he's not that busy from six to nine on the ref. Also on the ref is Teddy Lehman. He is also the color analyst for the Sooners. And like I already, like I already talked about, is on the ref from three to six, Monday through Friday, and is one half half of the Oklahoma breakdown. The other half of the Oakland breakdown, Gabe Eichard is on the sidelines. Gabe is not only part of the Oklahoma breakdown, but Monday through Friday, he is part of the Big 12 today. Sirius XM 375 from 3 to 5 there on that. And helping him as the main sideline guy analyst, Chris Plank, the planker, is on from... Also on from 9 to 11 on the ref. And is on from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Saturdays on Big Fox Sports Radio. All right, the Oklahoma Sooners head coach Brent Venables, his first year at Oklahoma. Overall 6-6 six six this year. 12 games, 50%, right down the middle. Conference play 3-9. and nine. Three and six, sorry, in nine games. That is 33% winning percentage. Zero and zero in bowls. This is his first bowl in the Cheez-It Bowl. But he does earn, uh, bring with him to Oklahoma a lot of winning tradition. Winning tradition that was already here when Brent got here. Including eight divisional championships. Uh, and four other uh, times the Oklahoma qualified for the Big 12 championship since they brought it back, and 13 conference titles. Now, the eight, divisional, eight individual divisional titles, 2000, 02, 03, 04, 06, 07, 08, and 2010, they then qualified for the first four, four years it was back. Uh, in 17, 18, 19, and 20, Oklahoma qualified for all four of those Big 12 championship games also. But you don't want to hear about that, guys, do you? No, you don't want to hear about how you earn it. You want to hear about the rings. 13 championships. 13 conference championships in the Big 12 era. In the Stoops era. 2000, 2004, 2006, 2007, 8, 10, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. 2022 recap, 6-6 six and six overall, 3-6 and six in Big 12 play, tied for 7th place with Kansas and West Virginia. Oklahoma beat Kansas but lost to West Virginia, as we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, before that, though, let's talk about what to expect for these guys offensively and defensively. Offensively, Oklahoma averages 32.9 points per ball game. And averages 472.2 yards per ball game offensively. The defense of Oklahoma, 29.6 points per ball game, and 400 450.5 uh, yards per ball game uh, on defense. Oklahoma's six and six and three and six Big 12 record includes wins and losses over wins. The wins, Florida, uh, uh, Texas, El Paso. Kent State, both games in Norman, 45-13 over UTEP and 33-3 over uh, Kent State. And at Nebraska, 49-19. The Sooners then lost their first three games of the year to finish to start uh, conference play. They lost 41-34 to Kansas State in Norman. They then lost 55-24 at TCU. And then they lost 49-0 at against Texas at the Texas State Fair. They then got their uh, their wits about them and got two wins, a 52-42 to win 
over Kansas in a good, solid uh, 27-13 win at Iowa State. The Sooners then came home to play Baylor and lost that game 35-32. The Sooners then lost at West Virginia 23-20. Uh, they then beat their former, their current rival Oklahoma State 28-13, but then lost at Tech in overtime 51-48. The Florida State Seminoles. Their head coach is Mike Norvell, he's a 2004 grad from Central uh, Flor uh, Central Arkansas, I think, right? Central Arkansas. Has coaching history from 2016 to 2019 at Memphis before joining on at 2020 for the COVID season. Overall, at the two stops, he's, played, played, he's coached in 86 games and has a 35 uh, or a 55 and 31 overall record, 61% winning clip, and in conference play, that is AAC and ACC play, conference uh, 35 and 20 to 21 in 56 games, a 62% winning clip, but 0 and 3 in bowl appearances. Florida State, though, since 2000, uh, since we met them in 2000, they have six. Conference championships, uh, divisional champion, six divisional championships. I should say, 05, 08, 10, 12, 13, and 14. Now, 2005, they tied with Boston College. Florida State won the outright title. 2008, Boston College and uh, Florida State did it again. Boston College won the outright title that year. And in 12, Clemson, they tied with Clemson. Florida State. Won the outright title. Since 1999, the Stoops era began. Florida State has eight conference championships. 99, 2000, 02, 03, 05, 12, 13, and 14. In 2020, Florida State is 9-3, 5-3 in the ACC play. Second in the Atlantic Division of the ACC Uh, they did beat, uh, in 2022, their offense, uh, last year, uh, that is, they, uh, lost to Mississippi, uh, they, uh, did not play in a bowl, by the way. Uh, 2022, offensively, 36.2 points per ball game, 457.7 yards per ball game is what they average offensively. Defensively. They give up, surrender, I'm sorry, 12.5 points per, uh, yards per ball, points per ball game and 307.3 yards per ball game in 2022. The 2022 season for Florida State, pretty good 9-3. and three. Getting back to a bowl for the first time in a while. Uh, was uh, And it got off to a pretty smart start, 9-3, 5-3 overall, with wins over Duquesne, 57-7. Uh, they then won at LSU in the Superdome, I should say, 24-23. They then beat Louisville in ACC play, 35-31. They then beat Boston College, 44-14, before losing their three straight. Wake Forest, 31-21. They lost at NC State, 19-17. And they lost to Clemson, 34-28. They then got back on the right track track against Georgia Tech, winning that one, 41-16. Uh, winning at Miami, 45-3. And at Syracuse, 38-3. They then beat Louisville, uh, Louisiana, 49-17. And finally, they beat Florida, their rival Florida, 45-38. And that is your Florida State team. All right, guys, that is the cheese it bowl preview hope you guys enjoyed it you guys know what to do hit the subscribe button or if you're watching it on youtube that's fine type in harry james taylor on the keypad it's not hard or on twitter i upload these videos to twitter also they are at soonerfan1982 at soonerfan1982 all right guys you know the drill 
if you guys are watching my basketball ones, see y'all for the next one. If you're watching just my football ones, see y'all next year, and boomer!